pretty cool actually. Pretty cool coming back and sort of seeing a few a few old faces and a few teachers I used to I used to like actually. I was I was a bit of a goody good at school, so tiptoed in here a little bit, looked around a little bit, asked some questions who was here and who's left, but uh, fortunately for me, most of the ones I got in trouble with have uh, had left. <laughs> Andy was a cheeky wee man. I, mean, I had him as a form teacher as well, but he's, yeah, he was always cheeky. It's good to see there's some balls out there, you'd hope so, with the, it being a co-ed school. Um. Tom, well, I think the poor boy had, had his mum and dad at school, so he couldn't get into too much trouble. I always tended to do my homework just in case I didn't want the teachers giving my parents the nudge in, in the staff room, so. I was very handy when they needed lunch money or needed some extra food from the canteen. That's where uh, my wife first spotted me, eating a sausage roll. Um, so yeah, it's, it brings back nice memories, happy memories. Andy Alice, can you take a selfie with yeah, me, sure. please? Oh, no, oh Andrew could be um, fairly lively. Cheeky might be one way of describing it. I remember he called my parents in for a meeting when I was in sixth form, year 12, because I'd drawn a picture of a face on my stomach and I was making it um, talk to all the kids while he was trying to teach. So it was quite embarrassing when Dad had to go in and be told that story. I can remember talking to his father and him commenting one of the things he was proudest about Andrew was that he would walk across the street to say hello. One of the fine intellects of Burnside High School. Oh. <laughs> Andy wasn't at school the time I was here, but I remember I used to be sort of like the mascot of the team when he was in the first 15, so I always used to look up to Andy. Don't tell him that, but... Being Warwick's son, he used to come along to the first 15 um, right from when he was a toddler. And it's, as a sort of seven or eight year old, he could, uh, he could kick better and pass better than most of the team that we had. Probably been harder the fact that I was an All Black and uh, people had expectations of him which put extra pressures on him. Uh, and I just take my hat off to him how hard he's worked to achieve what he has. Uh, well, the, the thing is, I actually really looked up to Warwick Taylor, especially as the third form, and he doesn't know this, but like he'd walk through, you know, to like the staff room, and I'd kind of like just follow him behind him, and because everyone would be like, oh, that's the guy who played for the All Blacks, and, and I knew all about the fact that he played for the All Blacks, so sort of following through and be in awe, kind of, you know, so it was pretty cool to come to a school where there was a, a, a teacher who was a, an, an ex All Black and an ex Great All Black. Hey, you boys going? Are you playing rugby this year? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Burnside High is. I suppose it has never really been renowned as a, as a real strong rugby school. Yeah, we didn't have the best first 15, but we um, I had an awesome time. You know, those times that I'll never forget. You know, playing with your mates that you're with all day at school. So, um, yeah, certainly fun to look back on. Coming back here now, I can see the, the real pride and the culture that's grown here. You know, the, there's more teams, um, there's, there's teachers and coaches who are really enthusiastic. The kids are right into it. So. It's so nice to come back and see that that culture's grown since the time that I was here.